The bond market's doing something, though, Rick. Yields higher at the long end by five basis points on 30s, up four on 10s. What do you see happening there, Rick? I mean, John, first of all, there are a few things at play. One, I'm looking at, see, think about what is actually at play here. Why are we not, I mean, particularly in leisure and hospitality, I'm looking at a chart that is actually mind-blowing. The increase in wage, if you take the six-month annualized increase in wage in leisure and hospitality, it's up 23%. So the demand for labor, and particularly in leisure and hospitality, and particularly, I would argue, in the entire, in the entire ecosystem, is tremendously strong. You think about what is the Fed's decision process? What are they trying to influence? The demand for labor. There is no ambiguity around demand for labor. There is, do I come back? I've got UI benefits. Gosh, maybe I'll just wait for the, for the summer to play out. Listen, I think it's pretty clear, and I think the markets are doing that. There's a lot of supply that's going to come to the market. There are certainly issues around when you look at this and you say, gosh, the broader economy is in good shape. You know, this is, I think, the whole dynamic around the Fed taper, the, the, the question of putting more supply, more liquidity, I should say, into the system is not having an impact, uh, certainly not a positive impact. So I still think the Fed should be tapering. I thought they should taper it a while ago. Um, you know, do they push it back a month or so? I'm not sure it's terribly relevant. And the markets are just saying, gosh, we got a lot of supply. These real rates aren't priced right. And this data really Rick, let me isn't jump as in. weak Forgive when you me, through it. But you've said this a couple of times. You don't think this conversation about tapering is material whatsoever. Can you give us some better perspective, clarity, Correct. context there? Why? <laughs> I, I actually find it unbelievable. First of all, the system's overstuffed with liquidity. I mean, you look at flows this week in equity funds, in the bond funds. You look at the, the amount of money sitting in money market funds. The system is overstuffed with liquidity. It's absolutely not having a positive impact putting this much liquidity in. And then when you break down the numbers that we're talking about, the Fed taper, the, the, the amount of focus on it, you know, we get 10 to 15 billion a month of taper. You get net supply of treasuries about 250 billion a month. You get 100 billion of investment grade credit supply. You get 30 billion of loan supply. You get 30 billion of high yield supply. And we're debating 10 to 15 billion of treasuries leaving the system or not, and whether that's going to happen a month or two later. I mean, you actually think about perspective of what we have to do in the markets and, and the billions that can put it into the system every day. The market's focused on this. And, and by the way, the Fed's delinking and will delink de rate rise from the taper. So it's not giving you that much indication of when rates are going to move higher. So anyway, I think the whole statement, I think the Fed should have started months ago. I don't think it's having a positive impact. And certainly when you break it down in perspective in terms of the supply demand of the markets, it's actually not that significant.